Hey there, and welcome to The Lever, the show where we break down how the evolution of technology will shift leverage more in the worker's favor than ever before. This isn't your mother's leadership or HR podcast talking about hybrid work of the future. That's not the future, that's now. We're talking about how major innovations in AI, robotics, automation, and Web3 will fundamentally change the role of humans at work for the better. My team and I sought out 25 of the most intelligent minds in economics, investing, academia, and business to determine the driving forces behind this monumental shift. Throughout this show, we'll explore captivating topics like how much a human worker is worth, our ongoing pursuit for work's purpose, what the future of human performance measurement looks like, and how top-tier talent could have a baseball card-like representation in years to come. I'm your host, Drew Fortin. Let's get to it. A lot of people are talking about Web3 right now. We are here today to talk about something that's very fundamental. We hear from people who are excited. We hear from people who are concerned. I think hardly anyone understands the impact that democratizing access to AI will have. It's 2023, and we find ourselves at an interesting time. It's possible you've seen this chart before. In the past century, the amount of technological change per decade has exponentially increased each time exponentially changing the role of workers. Thanks to the computer, 1950 is when we entered what economists call the knowledge economy that we're in today. The 80s brought the personal computer. Processing things became a machine's job and many traditional skilled workers were elevated to knowledge workers. The late 90s threw us into the internet age. We were finally connected 24 seven. Email allowed globalization to proliferate. The 2000s ushered in the mobility age. Now, work is more portable than ever. Cloud computing hit the web and software explodes. Communication is omnipresent. Soft skills become the premium resume asset. Have you led and built a global workforce to success? Great, you're hired. Then, bam, global pandemic. Cliche at this point, but it changed hearts and minds in the world of work forever. For those who still had jobs, work had never been a bigger part of their life. It was the only community that remained in a shutdown world where we spent the majority of our time. The obvious thing here is that the pandemic accelerated the shift to flexible and hybrid work, but there's something less obvious brewing underneath it all. That brings us to Greg Barnett. All right, you ready? I'm ready. My background is in industrial organizational psychology. I'm about 20 plus years in the field having worked through every little nuance you can imagine. It's with assessments, leadership development, culture, engagement, employee experience, performance management, you name it. And over the course of his 20 years, as an industrial and organizational psychologist, researcher, and executive, Greg started to notice a trend with the employer-employee relationship. I don't want to take us too deep, but even as like the 80s, there used to be a psychological contract which is really just this unspoken, here's what I'm gonna put in and here's what you're gonna give me for the work I do. And it used to be more relational in nature. And so in, when it was relational, it was more about when we talk about people being in it for the long term, there was yeah. a commitment to the, the organization and its goals for the long term. Now there's a big shift, which I think is maybe shining a brighter light on it, which is the psychological contract is now more transaction and it works in different ways. It's, I'm giving X, you're giving Y, and I'm measuring this relationship in terms of these things is really kind of creating more awareness of how those things are out of whack, where the organization has a lot of needs and the employees are like, wait a minute, I have some needs and I'm trying to balance those transactional needs. And those needs are, you know, well-being and flexibility and, right. and career growth. And But I need these things. Especially coming out of the pandemic, workers need a strong case for choosing a certain employer. It's no longer about the benefits. This is about identity. How do you choose to spend your time? Where do you spend your energy? What skills are you gaining? The recent graduate who hopes to work at a big firm in order to work with the best to build their resume. The marketer who puts in the time at a big agency to brush elbows with big brands. The sales rep who takes a risk at a new tech startup for the chance to catapult into a chief revenue position. The scientist who worked years climbing a ladder so they can say in the interview, yes, I've led a team at Merck. 
we all take a skills and experience-based approach to our careers. And how are businesses responding? I tend to see the large companies have very regimented training programs. This is Deborah Kurtz, VP of a recruiting firm, Higher Minds. You learn this, and then you learn this, and if you're talented enough, we'll put you into this track, and they have a very organized career path. I'm sure you've experienced this. Companies support your career ambitions, but only so much as they line up with long-term organizational objectives. A lot of people get pigeonholed early in their career and find it hard to break free later down the line. Pigeonholing is a bigger issue than I think any of us realize upon walking into our careers. I think that if I was going to put a stake in the ground, Drew, to say what's the number one thing that companies can or should be doing for career development and education, let there be some form of self driven, self-fulfilling prophecy around education. Mm. Um, being told you need to learn this is, this is why school is a problem for many people. Being told you need to learn this is usually, just like we said, people like to be in control. I'm currently in this role and what I am interested in doing moving forward is I'd like to get better at X and Y and I have yeah. an education on it. Companies that get this right are struggling much less to find talent. Take Amazon's career choice program, for instance. Warehouse workers and pickers can fully fund their bachelor's degrees. The slogan, your education is on us. Does Amazon really care if the pickers grow into a robotics engineer at the company? Of course not. This is simply a strategy to increase the tenure of a picker in their warehouse longer than just a few months. They've recognized this fragmented career journey that people are on and have bought into it. This isn't a bad thing. This is a great thing. There's this give and get from employees and employers who are both after very different things. And workers are responding by taking destiny into their own hands, not just leaving their jobs, but leaving full-time work altogether. The number of contractors per employee has doubled since we started measuring it before the pandemic. That's Liz Wilkie. Let's do it and she gets to look at a ton of data as Gusto's principal economist. Employees or workers are looking for freelancing part-time or full-time as a way to like hedge their bets about their current employment or to jump into a future job that they want to build skills for. Never underestimate the ability of a crisis moment to make you question, you know, lots of other things. We all know someone who recently left their full-time job to pursue their own thing, me included. The pandemic really highlighted how big a part of your life work is. I think what that's really telling us is when businesses are looking for a sort of more agile, more on demand, more sort of really skill relevant workforce, and that workers are sort of realizing that opportunity and that there is value for them in the flexibility, in the ability to take on projects that they care about. And it really is an opportunity. Many businesses need a specific type of knowledge to serve the specific problems. The name fractional worker says it all. Hire a fractional worker and pay a fraction of what you would pay a full-time employee. And the market is responding. The technology has sort of enabled us to redistribute work in these ways, especially mm -hmm. during a talent shortage, uh, where talent's getting really pricey and businesses really need to think about sort of managing their costs and who they bring on and who they don't. The rise of digital platforms to allow companies to access talent on demand to do certain tasks that are almost always managed, right, and guided by somebody in the business. The person in the business understands the business use, understands what that product needs to look like, understands how it needs to be done and how it fits in with all those other business systems. They can direct, right, a contractor to fulfill that task on spec. That's where I think the relationship is going. Just like our contributors mentioned earlier, the relationship is becoming more transactional for everyone involved. Does this mean the employee-employer relationship is broken? How do I respond to this statement that the employee-employer relationship is broken? Ooh, that's a very deep question, Drew. I mean, that we can have, uh, you know, a whole night with wine and discuss that and probably we're not gonna get figured it out. No, I have no idea, sorry. I think it's fundamentally based on how we are as a country, which is we are capitalists in nature. And that's Jenny Laros Berlin, entrepreneur in residence and lecturer at MIT's Martin Trust Center. And so if you are a capitalist, you're constantly thinking about the self-interest of something. And so mm -hmm. that goes to our very core of our culture and how we think about things because we frame things around this capitalistic mindset. And as a result, everybody is looking for each other's sort of 
personal gain and personal yes. move. And that's the crux of it, folks. A fragmented future. The social contract has changed. The deer have guns. Workers are wanting more and taking more into their own hands. Some businesses are responding with a mix of career development services as perks. But this won't curb the growing appetite of workers to control their own destinies. On this show, we're going to explain how the macro social shift correlates with the proliferation of technology. There have been plenty of technological leaps in history, shifting our alliance to newly discovered resources and invented technologies. Shifting from a horse and buggy to a car is one thing. Shifting from our mind to the mind of a machine? Now this is not just a concern for a technological step change or even the rate of change. This is a concern for our place in the universe. It puts everything into question. The velocity of change at work will also increase dramatically as AI takes hold. Jobs will evolve in a matter of months, not decades. And businesses' needs and priorities will change faster than ever before as they align to meet the moment. So where does this leave us? We have so much in store for you. In our next episode, we'll explore how technology could change the meaning of work for the better. There's a place for humans to be human. Like we're not sucking all the humanity out of work. What we're really essentially what's being done is we're saying there's a better way to do certain things. And in a later episode, we explore how Web3 is taking the relationship a step further in what's called a DAO or Decentralized Autonomous Organization. I do believe and predict that a large number of companies will be adopting and forming under what uh, you call like a DAO hybrid model, meaning that your business has a core, right? It has a core group of hierarchical employees that are able to make day-to-day -day decisions. Uh, but many companies will have large portions of their business that are made up by these kind of elastic and fluid workforces where people are able to kind of move in and out seamlessly uh, and contribute when and where they want. All right, team. I look forward to going on this journey with you. Let's learn. Let's embrace change. Let's step up to the challenge. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can visit levershow.com to learn more about our expert contributors, exclusive content, and uncut interviews. And remember, with technology, our leverage is limitless. Let's embrace it and change the world. Thank mm -hmm. you.